Welcome back to Black TV. It's time for Trader's Take. With Bitcoin unfortunately bleeding red for nearly a week now, its dominance slowly waning, it's time to check in with two gentlemen who can help us make sense of it all. We are joined now from Colorado by technical analyst and chart guru extraordinaire Socrates. And of course, joining us from New York City is our very own Joe Saz. How are you guys? Good, thanks. Doing well. Yeah, so as I said before, um, a lot is going on in the way of Bitcoin, and we're looking to you guys to clear it up for us. So please do that. Let's look to the charts. Uh, Sock, you want me to jump to the 15-minute real quick? Sure, go for it. All right. Uh, there's been some some good activity going on here. Uh, it's been pretty nuts. Uh, I would, we were pretty much consolidating in a dangerous territory, uh, reaching into these wick spaces. The uh, I'm going to get rid of this channel here because I, I didn't really like it. But point is, we were uh, in the 70, um, uh, what was it, 7800 area, and, and poked our heads into set the high 7900s uh, to mid 70s. Uh, I mean 7700s. I'm sorry, I'm flipping everything around. I haven't been sleeping much. Uh, but anyways. Um, we, we pumped out of there. We really started to carry some momentum up and nothing has really stopped it. So we have, you know, some decent volume here, uh, some, some good medium volume here, and then definitely closing it out with a big pump. Uh, I think this is starting to top out. We're nearing a sequential nine cell and I don't know how violent that's going to be. I mean, we had one that had a one candle pullback and then a vertical move. We've had a, you know, a couple that were, um, you know, pretty insignificant. So I, I don't really know what to think. I, I do think that, uh, that judging by the order book right now, uh, this is uh, reported by the the, the backstab of, of Bitcoin Exchange Coinbase Pro. But um, there, it looks like uh, the sellers seem to have are, are interested in capping out the price here. Where, where there's definitely dwindling liquidity on the buy side. So I, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. I'm kind of hesitant of this move. Uh, you know, from its roots, I, I don't. It doesn't really feel like a shakeout to me. What this feels like to me is more of a, a bullish feeling that the bottom is confirmed now that 70 like the mid 7700 uh, 7700 is held and and we bounced out of 7800 uh, i think this is more of like a, a little bullish euphoria that that there, a bottom is confirmed uh, based on what i see right now and, and and after watching the order broke for some time uh what are your thoughts um i'll go ahead and pull up a chart <laughs> so ben uh, last night was looking at this as a big area of support. We were basically at the bottom of this bear channel and also at horizontal support and got some uh, reversal dojis and then a nice bounce off of there. Been keeping my eye on this 50 EMA on the four hour chart. It has been holding as resistance um, all month and now we are testing it again and appear to be pulling back off of it slightly. Um, but what I am most interested in is this recent action uh, right here uh, really um, has all the signs of a uh, creek in a Wyckoff accumulation pattern. So if we look at um, this Wyckoff uh, accumulation, um, hopefully I'm getting what I'm looking for. Here we go. Uh, maybe a little hard to see, but uh, notice how you have these this choppy action that occurs. Um, and then you have this secondary test point number seven breaks down the lows of the selling climax. You then get a bounce and then enter this creek where it's just a straight markdown back to support. And then as soon as it gets there, it shoots up hard and jumps across the creek. So now what we're looking for is a signal of strength point number 12 which according to Wyckoff is the um, single best place to enter longs and make sure that all shorts are covered. So let's just move this over to a line chart, makes it a little bit easier to see. So we've got the selling climax, um, excuse me, preliminary support, selling climax, secondary test, uh, and then here is the creek where you just get a markdown back to support. And then after um, finding support, let's see here. Um, I have the chart already done, so I don't need to do it again. Um, you can draw this creek in that comes over 
that markdown action. And then when you break through that, that is the jump across the creek, which is um, very, very significant. So I am definitely gonna be paying close attention to this action over the next day or so to see if we get this. Um, it's still too early to really be doing anything about this, but it's not um, uh, right here, won't take long to get to. And this is the best area to go ahead and start trading this pattern is if we do put in a higher low after jumping across the creek, uh, the two entries for this pattern are right here, point number 11, and right here, point number 13. So I have not been bullish really at all until seeing this uh, jump across the creek. Now I'm paying very close attention and may even be a buyer if we can put in a nice higher low around 80, 80 or so. Okay, so a lot of uh, looking to, to, to figure out what happened exactly here. We know that Bitcoin dominance it has lowered. I mean, it's still, a, you know, what is it, around 66%. So we're not straying that far away from the 70% mark, but it's still, you know, worth noting. It's what people are doing now. Uh, recently, we had you guys give a price prediction for the beginning of November. Both of your responses were somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, around the $6,000 uh, range. I want to know what you guys, if you, if you feel like that still holds true for what's to come, or what do you, just in general, what do you guys think uh, will happen now with Bitcoin going forward? Uh, personally, I'm still bearish. I think that daily close was super ugly. So let's just talk about this for a second. Uh, I'm sure Sakma will have some input here too. I think the daily close, and look at that, we're already back into this. Like I, I wasn't putting too much weight on this descending triangle because it was, you know, there wasn't much data for it. But uh, we're already right back in here. We've already, you know, danced off the top uh, end of it. So I mean, maybe there's something here. Uh, I just thought that this daily close is going to make us, um, you know, it was it was going to position us for much more bearish activity. Uh, but obviously, we reversed that action immediately. So this is this is really starting to feel bottomy right now. And uh, you know, I think that um, Wyckoff presentation you just did was looking is, is looking pretty strong for a second here. Um, as far as the weekly is concerned, I mean, this this posture I think was was very bearish as well. I mean, this was a very ugly candle to close out the week. It could have been worse. Of course, it would have been nicer if we got below the wick space of the previous one. Uh, in my eyes, I would have felt much more comfortable there. But uh, 7,700 has been a really strong support area, so we have to take that into account and take into account that uh, it's very possible that that people are feeling like this is a bottom and that buyers are going to step up and start going nuts. Um, and I think a lot of the problem is like our seller is going to roll over and pull their liquidity and let the order book sweep to the upside. Um, or are they going to be capping out the price at certain key areas? And it seems like right now we have a $50 pullback from, from a breach of 8,200. We're now trading at 8,150. So I, I think it could very well be, you know, this, this could be a little bit of a pump fake. It didn't, didn't really get the feel. I didn't get the feel that this was a shakeout or anything like that. I think this is organic FOMO buying people convinced the bottom is in. Um, or maybe swing traders, I think that we're headed back up to maybe the 200 DMA day moving average. Uh, but I'm not really too optimistic yet uh, of uh, anything. So as far as November is concerned, I'm still thinking 6,000 or so would be my price target. Sock, same question. Um, I was really interested to see what happened around 75. Uh, if we got there before being having any confidence in a return to 6,000, that is where I want to buy big, but I don't um, remember uh, calling for a price to go there just yet. I was really looking at the 75 to 7,700 area, and now I am just basically staying neutral. Um, a lot of things could happen if we continue to resist. Uh, that 50 EMA and fail to put in a higher low on the um, four hour chart, then I would be um, definitely looking for those prices to come. Uh, whereas, uh, and I'll also be looking at that daily 50 and 200 EMAs. If those get a death cross, then um, I might be uh, losing confidence that 6,000 will hold. And if we do move down further, we definitely will get a death cross there. So a lot can happen right now. And I think it's best to just uh, stay on the sidelines and wait until we make a move out of this range. Okay, shifting gears now to XRP. Last week, the big news is that Ripple seems to be rebranding. It feels like they're dropping XRP in some sort of way. Uh, again, it hasn't, you know, nothing has been said about it yet, but that's the big news. They dropped um, some of their um, products from the website and it looks like that's what's happening. Even so, the price has jumped. What's going on there? 
Well, remember, I, I don't know if you remember, Ryan, but I've been talking about this for a long time, that, that they were going to, you know, strategically distance themselves from their asset Ripple, which was then, you know, known as XRP after, you know, they were getting sued for securities fraud or whatever it is that I, I don't know the exact outline to that case. But this is just like more confirmation that I'm right, that Ripple Labs is distancing itself from from a number of these assets that have like X in the name and try to like really, really um, they bridge the gap between the corporation and the asset. And I think the more that they start to distance themselves from XRP, the asset, that's probably going to be their only surefire way to prevent themselves from really serious legal trouble. As, as we saw with AOS, though, it was just a slap on the wrist. And I think it's very possible that XRP is going to experience or Ripple Labs will experience something similar. And maybe some conditions might be that they can't, you know, uh, own, you know, a majority of XYZ, you know, they can't run most of the nodes, or I think there's only something like 80 or so validators, maybe 140 um, that, that are able to vote. And I think XRP has not most of them at this point, but they definitely have a good bit. Um, so anyways, uh, those could be some misconceptions. I don't have the exact numbers, but uh, point is, this is all, I think, a strategic play for their legal uh, case. And um, I think I think uh, XRP once they distance themselves completely and they've secured all these relationships with massive, you know, you know, uh, financial powers, IMF and, and you know a number of banks and stuff. They're basically I, I think they're just going to sell themselves as as technical support, you know. And I think they'll distance themselves from XRP and it'll crash to zero and, and leave everyone wondering what happened. Um, but as far as price action is concerned, excuse that rant. Uh, let's see here. No, it's actually, uh, I think, Rant, it's a worthwhile theory that that's what's happening now. It's interesting. It's absolutely interesting to keep getting updates on that. But yes, absolutely. Taking it to the charts. Yeah, 7% move to the upside here, putting us back in near the uh, channel that we've had that, that we were sitting in for so long. Sock, this, this channel goes back a number of months. We kind of sat in here a while, pumped out, came back, broke down. Um, I, I kind of have a feeling that this is just kind of Ripple's uh, little comfort zone uh, but ascending triangle breakout is pretty clear um, I, i'm not really seeing too much we do have a bearish crossover of the uh, intermediate and long-term moving averages so on a technical level I, I would say i'm not really bullish long-term midterm on this um what, what are your thoughts Sock? um no real thoughts there i was just looking at the xrp btc chart and that looks um pretty darn bottomy to me xrp B oh do you want to just share no that's okay uh, uh, XRP BTC is reported by Binance. Yeah, it's a nice little consolidation area there. Um, inverse uh, head. So talk inverse. about it. <laughs> yeah, I see an inverse head and shoulders um, breaking through. This area right here would be confirmation, and that uh, that looks pretty darn bottomy, um, as much as I don't want to say it. Yeah, I, I do think XRP is going to be one of the few that survives this immediate. If, if Bitcoin does continue to crash and there is an altcoin exodus and, and, it, and it continues to gain steam, then I think XRP F might be two of the survivors and as much as I hate to say as well. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, XRP is probably going to be around a little bit longer than I want it to. But we'll see. You know, we also have that court case going on. I don't really have any dates on that. But, um, you know, I, I think as, as long as... Uh, as long as people are willing to, to be diehard supporters of this asset and we have tons and tons of them, then, you know, there's going to be there's going to be demand. So uh, as isolated as that community might be and as, as, as broke as the buyers might be, you know, they won't be willing to sell, which means that a penny is worth, you know, something, you know, to, to those uh, to that asset. So XRP is going down and we definitely have to keep our eyes peeled uh, in that regard. I, uh, I'd like to well, go. We're going up. Oh, Sock, you think you're going just, up just, with XRP? Uh, against BTC, it sure looks uh, like it's put in a bottom, at least short term to me. <laughs> OK, yeah, so we'll, I, I uh, we'll wait and we'll see what's going on there. But then shifting once again to Tether um, and Bitfinex, the latest this week it was uh, a post that they made uh, kind of negating this news by Bloomberg, a token analyst, an analytics firm basically is saying that they are pumping. Um, the Bitcoin price. They didn't like that very much, but has that had an, any effect on what's going on with Tether as a whole? Uh, I know I'm jumping on a lot of these questions, Sock. I hope you don't mind. Um, I, I saw, uh, as far as Tether is concerned, we just had a 20, another $20 million print uh, today. So, I mean, hours ago, maybe less. So it seems like they're still uh, op operating under normal circumstances. I, I think the abnormal circumstances were 100 million packs every other day. 
Um, that was certainly uh, irrational type printing. I, I think the correlation, the inverse correlation that it should have to price action, circulating supply to price action was, has been broken for a number of months now. So, uh, you know, as far as the tether play out, it's, it hasn't really impacted the market. I think this, this is one of my theories, okay? We do have some dates that are coming up that are significant for the case. And if people are going to start front running- a You are referring to the New York Attorney General case against Tether, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if people are starting to take note of that and, and have been aware of this and said, you know what, I'm gonna play with this fire, this hot potato or whatever, for in, until, until I can't or shouldn't, uh, which I, in my opinion should have been a lot longer ago, but anyways. Um, so people are playing and dancing with this fire, right? Well, um, if people are going to start front running a, a tether exodus, then it's definitely going to cause at least some very volatile action in Bitcoin, if not mostly upside action in Bitcoin, because people will be exiting tether most likely to Bitcoin, maybe to some alts. But uh, in, in the short term, I think that if tether is going to look bad, like, you know, when we're talking some serious like um, cease and desist type stuff, then I think people, the smart big money will be exiting tether for Bitcoin if they haven't already. Which is going to cause, you know, some some erratic activity, probably to the upside, and uh, that's gonna that's definitely gonna mess with my bearish outlook. And so this uh, this blog post again, they're kind of refuting something that hasn't happened yet. It it wasn't it didn't relate to what's happening with the New York Attorney General's office. With that, Socrates, what do you think is going to happen with Tether in the near future? Um, I haven't been paying that close attention, to be honest. Last I heard, um, I think in the discovery of that case, they found that Tether was backed by about like 80% reserve, something along those lines, which really was a lot better than I had ever thought. And uh, definitely, you know, double check, I'm just going off of memory here. Um, but I was always very, very suspicious of their impact on the market. And then after it came out from uh, what I believe to be a reliable source that they are backed by like eight to one, uh, I mean, excuse me, 80%, um, uh, 80 cents to a dollar, then I became much more um, confident in, in their lack of ability to really manipulate the market if they really do have those reserves. Yeah, the, just to quickly note, Oren, I know what you're talking about. Basically, the, the concept is there will be a lawsuit uh, from the people saying that, you know, they, that Tether manipulated the market and people lost a lot of opportunity as a result of that. And uh, is that what you're referring to right. more around? Yes. No, that's exactly okay. what they did. They responded to just a, an article that was published. Nothing. Uh, it seemed like there was no official paper. They just put out a response, a just in case it seemed like uh, something happened. Here's your warning. We will fight you. It seemed like they're prepared to, to do that. But um, it's, it's unclear yet what that end game is or, or what will happen in the future with that so it, i mean it's definitely something we, again like xrp we have to keep our eye out and and see just where it goes from here but uh, i'd like to thank you guys for joining us for this rendition of traders take today and breaking that down for us thank you very much joe Saz and socrates for all you folks watching at blocktv.com keep on watching for more cryptocurrency and blockchain related news For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.